Back in 2009, when the Big Bang Theory was still funny, I saw an episode that gave me an it's idea. It's a snowflake from the North Pole. Are you serious? It's actually a pretty simple process. You see, cyanoacrylates are monomers which polymerize on... Mm. What? My mind was blown. All I had to do was preserve some snowflakes and I could get some hot steamy neighbor action. So I did my homework and I found out that Leonard was mostly right. The process is very simple. And although not perfect, the results are actually pretty good. Here's what you'll need. Snow. A dark piece of paper or cardboard. Glass cover slips. Clean. Microscope slides. You'll want to make sure that these are clean. A fine tip paintbrush. Super glue, the non-gel kind. A working flashlight or headlamp. And optionally a magnifying glass. Gather all your items, especially anything that will be touching or getting close to a snowflake. Take these items and put them in a cold place like your freezer. You, you may need to make room in your freezer. Speaking of cold places, it's important to dress warmly. One, it protects you. Two, it protects your snowflakes from your body heat. And most importantly, it protects your identity because trust me, you're going to look stupid out there collecting snowflakes in the middle of the night. So if conditions are good and your neighbors are nowhere to be seen, gather your items from the freezer and set out to collect some snowflakes. It turns out snowflake morphology depends greatly on humidity and temperature. I found the best snowflakes occur about between 15 and 25 Fahrenheit. Let the snow collect on your dark sheet of paper and then look around for that snowflake that screams, this will get me so much hot neighbor action. In my experience, bigger is better. Be aware at this point, if you accidentally exhale onto your snowflake, it will immediately melt. Go ahead and grab your super glue and put as small as drop as you can possibly manage onto your snowflake. Here you want to be as gentle as possible. Whatever you do, don't push down on the cover slip and don't hold the cover slip more than you have to. Here are some of my results. Uh, obviously these are the rejects because all the good ones have been used on countless a neighbor. To great effect I might add. My two biggest frustrations with this process have been trapped air bubbles and melting of the snowflakes. So some of the air bubbles and melting are actually a result of the chemistry involved. Super glue is actually just a cyanoacrylate. I should pause here and say that the how to get hot steamy neighbor action through snowflake preservation portion of this video is now over. Cyanoacrylates are actually monomers that get initiated in the presence of water. An electron moves from the hydronium ion to the cyanoacrylate. So now that cyanoacrylate has an electron to donate and will go ahead and react with other monomers. This will continue in a process called living polymerization, wherein as long as free monomers are available, the reaction will continue. So a sticky looking superglue is probably a sign that the glue has been polymerizing in the bottle. Non-gel superglue should look just like water. The fact that water kicks off this reaction is why we can use it to preserve snowflakes. The one drawback is that this reaction is actually exothermic, meaning it releases heat. That heat that gets produced could melt the snowflake, and that could be an explanation for some of the rounding of the snowflakes I've seen. The heat may also be a likely culprit for the air bubbles. However, there may also be side reactions producing gases that I'm not aware of. Honestly though, the best way to preserve a snowflake is through a photograph, so get out there with a macro lens. The downside, of course, being the lack of included hot steamy neighbor action. So thanks for watching, and I hope this was both useful and informative. Please feel free to give me critical feedback, because I always want to improve what I'm doing, and the only way I can do that is through feedback.